This video is sponsored by Bloomscape. All right, so here are a few things one can expect. I'll be creating a concrete top, which could be used for multiple applications. Then I cut a few wood joints, and by few, I mean this much. This table is made for the outdoor experience, but there's no reason why you cannot use it indoors. You cannot use it if you don't have it, so let's head to the shop. I have my measurements, I'm pretty much ready to go. Gotta cut this guy down. When the blade starts, this project starts, so let's do this. Normally when I'm working with large panels, I like to use a circular saw to cut them down. But not today, I'll take the chance and try to run this through the table saw. Now that I have the large sheet of melamine cut down to a manageable size, I'll go ahead and cut the sheet down to its final dimensions and also the sides. If you have a pocket hole jig, you can drill pocket holes along the frame that I'm working on. Then secure the frame to the bottom form. However, if you don't have a pocket hole jig, you can follow the method I'm using here. If you're not careful, you can split the melamine while driving in the screw. For this, I recommend making a pilot hole, then drive the screw. Once I have the frame complete, I'll take the bottom and place it on top of the frame. Now I'll repeat the same step to prevent the melamine from splitting. So I'm just gonna repeat the rest of this, do it on the other three sides and wrap this up. I'm gonna flip this over and put on some silicone to seal the corners. While I'm doing that, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Bloomscape, the modern garden center delivering the largest variety of quality plants directly from the greenhouse to people's homes. Bloomscape is on a mission to strengthen people's relationship with plants by delivering healthy, ready to go potted plants and now outdoor plants providing ongoing tips and advice needed to help them thrive. Bloomscape's outdoor offering Bloom Kit includes everything you need to get your patio springtime ready, including a variety of expertly selected young plants and add-ons such as a variety of containers plus tools, supplies, along with care and instructions to keep them alive and thriving. So this just came in. First thing you want to do when you get your box is to open it up and get the plants out. It's best to get these planted right away. Simply follow the instructions which show you how to lay them out. Choose from a variety of plants you can buy now and plant later after the last frost, depending on where you live in the US. Click on the link in the description. Use my code DIYCreators to get 20% off your first Bloomscape plant order of $100 or more. Now I'm gonna take this guy outside, let it get some sun while I finish up my project. I'll use silicone for two reasons here. The first reason is to make sure the box is sealed and there are no leaks. And the other is to put a round profile on the edge. When working with silicone, that can get quite messy. So make sure you have paper towel and alcohol nearby before you start. Before I get to mixing, I'll get this wire mesh cut to size to reinforce the form. To make the top, I ended up using two and a half 80 pounds bag, which is quite heavy. It wasn't my intention to make it this heavy, but I'll keep it in mind for the next go around. Once I have the cement mix in the mixing container, I add water to it. It took about seven to 10 minutes to get this properly mixed. I scraped the sides and bottom and made sure I turned everything over and added additional water if needed. At this point, the silicone is dry and I'm ready to pour the concrete. When I work with melamine, I don't tend to have a lot of bonding issues with the concrete not releasing, but just in case I use WD-40 as a mold release. Now I can get the mix over into the form and push it around. At this point, the weight of the form is quite manageable, so I use a hammer to beat the form and also just shake it up and down just to try to work out some of the air bubbles. Now is a good time to place the wire mesh inside the form. And after mixing up the next batch of concrete, I'll just place that on top of the wire mesh. I mixed enough to fill the entire form, but in hindsight, I wish I would have been a bit more generous. This turned out to be quite heavy. Now that I have the concrete pushed around, I'll use lumber to screed the top of the form. A 
I vibrated the form the best I could to release additional bubbles. Since the floor has a pitch to it, I shimmed it to make it as level as possible. And before I walk away from this, I'll take plastic and lay it on top. And this should help the form from drying out too fast. And now it's time to demold this and see how well it came out. I'm hoping that the other side looks pretty good. I do see some small air bubbles along the side, which I'm fine with those since this is an outdoor table. But if the uh, underneath looks pretty good, I'll leave it as is. But if I feel like I need to fill in some of the air bubbles, we'll do that as well. Due to the weight of this, I wasn't sure if I vibrated this enough, but once I flipped it over and I saw the top, I was pretty happy with what I saw. There are some small air pockets in it, but nothing that would drive me crazy. So right now I have the top out of the way and I'm gonna shift my focus over to building the lower half of the table. It's gonna be made of four by four. I'll be using Douglas fir for the bottom half and it's gonna be heavy as well, but it should be strong enough to support the top. I sort of underestimated the amount of cuts I had to make to create this bottom half of the table. After making a bunch of cuts on the miter saw, here's what I have. Making the cuts on the miter saw was just a warm up. Here's where the real fun starts. Now, since I don't do this that often, I made sure I marked off the areas that I will be cutting away, just so I don't confuse myself while I'm making the cuts. In this case, some of these marks are gonna be easier done on a band saw. Some of them is fully capable of being done on a table saw. There's a lot of options here when it comes to removing these sections, but I'm going to try to go for the easiest route and try to speed up this process since there is a lot to do. So this is the first of many pieces that I need to cut. So what I'm gonna do here is try to figure out the best way to go about this. So I'll be a bit hesitant at first going through this process, just sort of getting a feel for it and figuring out the best approach. I tried to use a guide, but I ultimately felt it was just as easy if I just did it freehand and just cut close to the line rather than trying to cut exactly on the line. In my opinion, the bandsaw is probably the easiest way to do this, although I have done similar things using a table saw. So if I don't link it, check out my outdoor sofa video and you'll find it there. I've shown how to make the previous cut and this is probably the simplest of all the cuts and that's making a half flap joint. In order to keep focus, I marked off the sections that need to be removed and then add additional marking so I can keep track of those. To try and make this joint as accurate as possible, I'll use the existing joint that I previously cut, then I'll line it up to the part that needs to be cut and transfer the markings. For this section, I thought it was easier to use a forcing bit to remove the bulk of the material. The more material I move, the better. It's gonna make things a whole lot easier once I need to chisel it out. Now I'll use a handsaw to cut along the line, this way I don't travel beyond it while using the chisel. In this case, I'm unable to cut along the horizontal line, so I'll use a marking gauge to score the wood, which is good enough to work with. Doing these are quite tedious, but once you get a good fit, it's all smiles from here. Now, although many of these look the same, they may not fit together as easy as I'd like. So what I did here is as I worked on each individual joint, I marked both pieces so I know which parts go together. 
and this applies to every single joint in this build. Now that I confirm all parts fit together, it's time to sand it all down. Before connecting the parts together, I applied wood glue thoroughly on both parts. All parts were glued together. I didn't see any additional need to add hardware, but keep in mind this is something you can totally add. So I just wrapped up the bottom, now I'll work on the ends. Since many of these parts look the same, I had to keep track of what part went together. I let the side sit overnight which should give the wood glue plenty of time to set up. Now it's a matter of putting it all together. Now that the wood glue has set up, I'll use the chisel to clean up some of the joints. The chisel does a good job shaving things down and the sander cleans it up. Now I didn't mill the 4x4s, I just cut parts and fit them together. The added accent parts at the bottom are the only thing that has a sharp edge on them. To make those blend a bit better, I routed those sections using a round over bit. Now that all the parts are together, I went over this one more time using a sander. Before moving on to staining, I'll give it a quick vacuum to remove any loose dust. Now I'll flip this over, stain the bottom first, flip it back over, and then finish staining the top. Now the stain I'm using here is espresso. It's much darker than I would usually go for, but let's just give it a shot and see what it looks like in the end. I applied the stain with a brush and removed it with a rag. There are still a few more steps to go, but I'll fill you in on what's next. You can apply a layer of urethane or varnish to make this truly outdoor ready. As far as the top, I'll allow 30 days before applying a concrete sealer. The top is heavy enough to hold its own so there'll be no fasteners needed, just relying on gravity. Now I do plan to add furniture feet on this to lift it off the ground. I just need to find something that can withstand the outdoor element. So if you know something, let me know in the comments. Well that's it for this one, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you ain't already.